Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back. We are going to talk about something today that can really change your relationship. And interestingly, this has been around for a long time, but some people are just discovering it. I'm talking about the five love languages. We all have certain ways that we like to approach a relationship. And I do believe the love languages don't even just apply to intimate relationships. It can just be relationships in general, family relationships. We're going to talk about that today and kind of go through each one of the five and really dissect them. She is somebody that helps people navigate relationships all the time. An amazing psychologist, works with couples, works with families, individuals, and uh, she's an author as well. Dr. Ann Creekmore is back with us. Hi, Ann. How are you doing? Good, Steve. How are you? Very well. Very well. And I thought it was great to come up with the five love languages. Uh, I was talking to uh, some guys earlier in the week, and that's what we were talking about. (laughs) Believe it or not, guys actually talk about this stuff. That's wonderful. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. And I know some of them. uh, Some of them I, I forget. And uh, you know, even had to apply them to our relationships, but it also is great because it makes you think, what do you need in a relationship based on the five? And what does the other person need based on those five? So uh, where do you want to start? Uh, well, let's start with um, talking about the five love languages, uh, what they are. And actually, anyone can find out what their love languages are by just going on to their phone or you know, computer, whatever, and putting in the five love languages quiz. And this was based on a therapist who um, kind of figured this out, did the workshops on it. And now it's just a free, you can get it free. You just put in it, fill out this little couple minute quiz, and then you, um, it will generate the rank order of the five love languages in, or what your top to bottom one is. It'll also give you percents because sometimes I always say, well, the person's love, main love languages are the top two generally, but sometimes all, you know, the top three are all 27%. So then obviously they would all count. Hmm. So the percents are important as well. Um, and the five love languages are, there's um, quality time, there's acts of service, words of affirmation, physical contact, and gifts. Hmm. And then I'm, I'm going to describe them if it's okay, because some it, you kind of know what that means, but it, it's a little bit more to it if you want me to explain that. Uh, to tell you what they actually mean, each of them. Quality, I'll start with the hardest one for people to do. Sure. Uh, quality time. Of course, we all want quality time with our friends or our, you know, significant others. But people who have a high need for quality time, I call this, this is just me, you know, I call it a blessing and a curse. Oh, I'm sorry. It kind of went out. Are there we there? go. We have, we're here. <laughs> It, it is wonderful if you do this for the other person, um, but it takes a little more time than um, the other ones, obviously, um, because you have to spend generally, this is just my uh, my take working with couples for decades, right? Or family members, because you get, they have the books on the I love languages for parents and children and for friends and for, you know, partners, et cetera. But People who have that need for quality time really like to spend a couple hours a day, every day with their, with that person to feel the love. Now, the good thing about it is that you don't have to actually do anything. It's not like if you, you know, you're taking out your date and she likes that and you got to take her to some expensive place every day. No, it can be nothing. It could be like, oh, you know, we wanted to clean that garage out, you know, hey, we both want to do that. It's, it's uh, you know, let's, let's go do that. As long as you're getting along, it's all amicable, then, mm-hmm. you know, that would count as your quality time that day. Or you can say, oh, the basketball tournament's on four nights this week. Well, gosh, you just figured out, you know, four, uh, four evenings of quality time. 
The only problem with it is that if a person doesn't get it practically every day, just like any of the other ones, you know, if they're getting not, you know, physical contact is one and then you don't get any, you don't get a hug, you know, or something, you know, every day or some a cuddle or whatever, you're not going to feel the love. But if you have quality time, it does take a couple hours. So it's a little bit longer, but you have to kind of, the other person needs that. It's almost like an addiction. Like if they won't feel the love, they'll start to feel lack of trust and even think, well, does this person like somebody else better than me? You know, and it can generate arguments. So then the next day when you're trying to get quality time, you're in the middle of a little bit of an argument because the person felt a little, you know, didn't love me, you know? Yeah, uh, you know, yesterday. And so that's the only hitch with that one. It has to be kind of really, you know, I might do four days in a row and then have to, you can take one day off, but then you're back doing something together, kind of friend time together. So so question on that. And now you say it's every day. Is it really yes. every day for everybody, you know, or is it very subjective? Let's say quality time, somebody makes Quality time is the number one thing on their five love languages. It's at the top. Yes. But yes. could it also be quality time is, uh, let's say yeah, they don't live together, but want to see each other, you know, at least three times a week. That counts. That would be my quality time, you know, for somebody with that. It doesn't have to be every day. That's where I'm getting at. Yes. I mean, you can, um, you can, uh, this is just my experience working with couples Okay. that, I, I, that if you, you know, I mean, of course, you can be mature about things and realize if you live apart, you know, but I mean, even then you could, you know, be talking through the day and touching base or maybe, you know, getting to play in a game together online or something like that. It's, um, you know, most days, you know, take okay. maybe the fifth day off or something. And sometimes couples just are long distance and maybe they do like stock it up like a camel. You know, you got to meet somewhere for a romantic getaway. You spend three full days together. Some I've seen a few couples like that that were able to be doing it that way. But you got to understand a lot of times people might get a little feisty with you just because that if they needed the quality time, they didn't get it for a day or two. That could just be the, you know, the real, the problem is, is triggering that those unmet affectional needs somehow, and they're sure. reacting to that. And like you said, great point, uh, doing things together. It doesn't have to be a date. Like a person I hang with, uh, we, we painted a room at her place uh, exactly a week ago, six mm -hmm. hours. And yeah, then it, you know, you did it. <laughs> 12 30 AM, but it was fun <laughs> doing it together. Um, right. And that counted as, you know, one, one time during the week we got together. Absolutely. That's excellent quality time. As long as you're, you know, hanging out and you're enjoying that time together, it can't, I've had it, the opposite go where a uh, husband, you know, they're in their counseling. They learn that his wife's is quality time. So he plans this big event on a Friday night. They're going to a fancy restaurant, you know, taking her out. But as they walk out the door to the car, he looks at her and goes, you're going to wear that dress? <laughs> it's like, uh -oh. but guess what? It wasn't quality time. She just felt so bad in the dress she was in the whole time. You've got to make, the person has to feel like, you know, they're accepted. It's like, you know, friend time together. Now, like you would when you're younger and right. you just hung out. So it doesn't matter what you do. It's just that it's, uh, you feel the love. <laughs> I'm going to dinner tonight with a few other couples. So I'll be uh, mindful not to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wouldn't say that, Steve. <laughs> you know, I want to I want to press the pause button for a moment on the love languages and and throw you a question, but it's it's relationship related. Okay. In conversations with some other men, it came up that one or two feel that you should never show as a man emotion emotion to a woman because they will always use it against you. And I'm <laughs> trying to process that. You know, and, 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 and what does that mean in terms of emotion? Number one, um, mm -hmm. but what, what are your thoughts on that? It is, you know, it, it's always been said that guys don't show emotion. And then that's what, that was the conversation. And then one said, well, yeah. Uh, and then when we do, then it gets turned and thrown back in our face and, and all of that. Um, your thoughts on that? Well, I, you know, it would help if you ask him. 
and find out what he means by emotion. But a lot of men, what I comes to my mind right away is a lot of men, uh, they say use anger as the mask to kind of hide their feelings. Anger is more of a secondary emotion. It's more of, you know, gives you some energy to do something, but really you have to go below the anger or frustration or whatever degree of annoyance. You have to go below it and ask yourself, am I feeling sad about something? Am I feeling anxious or scared about something? Um, and then those are the real emotions. Um, if a person is just being angry, you know, or just expressing frustration or criticism, I could see because it isn't even really being real or vulnerable and sharing the depths of what's really going on. So sometimes it's good, you know, men that, you know, have to, you know, supposedly according to the development of the evolutionary development of the brain, males' brains, you know, they're used to being the hunters and the, uh, you know, and everything's goal oriented and they need to do and then go away and process what they're feeling and thinking and then come back, you know, and share their feelings. So maybe, if the person can go away, the man can go away and figure out what am I really feeling underneath this? And I want to jump in. Exactly what you're saying came up in the mm -hmm. conversation in that if you have something that's on your mind, don't talk. Yeah, wait, Hold process. It, process it. And it was all you're spot on this whole conversation. It was also brought up that back in the day, men did that dirty work, if you will. And they were gone for a long time and then would come back. They men did not spend all this time that they do now with their partner and families. They were gone. So right. it, it was exactly. even brought up that that, you know, that things have changed and guys are still running on the old program from back then. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, to your point. I think women want to hear what's going on, you know, with and, and certainly, you know, as long as it's not like something directed at them, you know, because they haven't gotten to the lower, to the deep, true feelings. And they're just, you know, at the surface of it and being angry about something. Gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to the love languages. So we identified one of them, which is quality time. How about another one? Okay. Um, let's go with acts of service. Acts of service is, is a lot of people might think that that's like, say, partners or whatever, that it's they're doing their chores, I'm doing my chores. It, it's not that. It's not about just fulfilling, you know, your part of the chore you were supposed to do. Acts of service are actually when you perceive the other person as feeling stressed out or distressed in some way, and you just pitch in right at the moment. It's just kind of like lightening the load right then at that moment for the person and um, just doing something that helps them out at the moment. You're there for them. Gotcha. So, um, yeah. And to, and do you have a question about that? Because I was saying- No, an, an act of service. Let, mm -hmm. Let's give another example. Would it be, mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, you know, I'll use, mm -hmm. I'll use my example before, act of service. Came over and helped paint a room and did some That's other stuff. Major, major acts of service and quality time. And, quality and I'm time. sure you were given positive affirmations we get into the words of affirmations next <laughs> and then i, I must have I, nailed at least four right there you just nailed it there. <laughs> yeah uh, as, as much as i was like as it's, it's 10 o'clock at night and i'm still painting <laughs> it was it was a good thing and it was fun it was fun it was just right you know, cool after no, a long day that was the challenge but it needed for other reasons it needed to get done then right um, it was, exactly we're on, it was we're on a, a, a clock to get it done okay. So, okay. So acts of service is, is one of them. I, you know, it's not mine in terms of the uh, priority love languages. And it's almost, almost hard for me to process somebody putting that at the top of their list. Do people, have you talked to people where acts of service is number one? Absolutely. I mean, wow. I can think, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean this, it, you know, these, I can't say which one more of, they're all kind of equal sure. when I, because I do it with all couples that come in for therapy. That's one of the things part of their assessment would be that to go home and do that, bring it in next time and we work on it. So yeah, tons of people do acts of service. And, um, you know, guys may sometimes, you know, since, you know, the, especially the energy, the male, female, um, you know, is the man wants to be trusted or wants to provide 
you know, and the woman wants to be cherished and listened to and her needs provide, you know, kind of that alchemy kind of thing between men and women. So some men, you know, automatically want to do these acts of service. It's kind of a guy thing as well, providing like, you know, going over, let me help you get this painting done or whatever, you know, that's a kind of an act of service. And I had, uh, but unfortunately, if that doesn't do it for the woman, for example, I'm thinking of a situation where a couple was getting actually divorced and they kind of wanted co-parenting. So he would come in for his therapy because he actually didn't want the divorce really. And she, but she would do the co-parenting telehealth while, you know, he would come sometimes for his therapy. And we did the love languages anyway. And for his children too, because a lot of it was the focus, you know, to help the children understand their needs. But his was acts of service, it was his top one. And guess what? Her bottom one that was like a 3% that didn't matter to her was, yep, hmm. acts of service. So his whole marriage, he'd been doing these little things, noticing and just pitching in and doing. And it, she, of course, loved, you know, loved it. It was just like a gift. We all like a gift, but doesn't necessarily mean, oh, he loves me or doesn't mean, you know, that he did these acts of service. She didn't feel the love. They had kind of opposite ones, which is why to bring it out and talk about it. And so you really know. So he'd been doing all that all those years and it really had never, and she was getting out of the marriage wow. really not till and she was really loved. So we're, we're, I don't want to run out of time. So let's get, oh, let's I'm get sorry. to another one. No, 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 <laughs> Usual. not, not at all. But yeah, I always mm -hmm. look at the clock and we got five and uh, we, we nailed two. We got oh, three to I, go. Okay. Uh, words of affirmation. I, I see them as easier just because, I mean, you can say nice things, compliments, you know, I love you. You look nice. You did a good job. You know, you know, this place, this looks great. Whatever you say. Those are all, and you, and even if you're apart, right? Say you don't need the quality time, you're not together, living in the same city, for example, like we talked about. You can just be texting through the day, five affirmations or on the phone, say them. And and that's people feel the love that way. Would it be the same? Would this come out of the category of words of affirmation when somebody says, I appreciate you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Anytime uh, you say something positive about the person, it's a word of affirmation and okay. any compliment or any feeling of love expressed for them. I love you. That's an affirmation. Uh, that, yeah. that, that's that's one of my top two. Uh, all right. <laughs> Everybody's different. I know. I know mine. There it is. <laughs> one of them. Definitely top two. Um, what's one, one of the other? I'm trying to think of the other. You know, them, but I'm trying to remember uh, uh -huh. another one. How about it? Mm -hmm um let's see gifts okay gifts and now gifts don't have to be expensive it's not a that it's like and i'll use the example of the person who kind of came up with this and started the couple's therapy with it he had a man come to his workshop for the five love languages and the man's husband or the wife didn't come only the husband and said you know i think my wife would like gifts so he went home. He said, I'm going to give her a different gift every day. So he's at the mall. He gets her the fat cookie that she likes, you know, and he brings it home. And then he's on the way home. He says, a couple of little wildflowers. He gets a little bouquet and hands it to her the next day. The next day, then has to writes a little note, you know, puts a little placard next to something, a little something. By the end of the week, she's going, he loves me. And he was right. He, you know, it was gifts. So it's not expensive. It's just the thought that counts, that, you know, that you're thinking of the person and just give them a little something. And it could be, yeah, I, I think back to, and I think all of us do this when we think about a love language, how we apply it. I will occasionally just stop by and drop off a cup of coffee of, of right. a certain type and prepare it a certain way. Now, here you go. Got to go. Bye. And that's it. Right. Uh, little, little things like that. That would be perfect. That's a great example, you know? Yeah. I mean, and if you brought coffee when you were painting, like you're saying, you got all four. Let's see when you uh, okay, you and it, and then you got I, like, I, picked up I, the paint. I got it covered. Go. I got it covered. I brought sandpaper. Okay, so that was my gift. That is a gift. I mean, I'm serious because you needed it, you know, and and it's also an act of service. And right? and, and it, was it. it was it thoughtful. It was thoughtful. It was a little gift. You didn't say, mm -hmm. "Oh, and you can." Uh, here's the receipt. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. I'm teasing with you. <laughs> no, I got you. No, I know he, you I'm just saying you did them all. So, what's the fifth one? Let's see. 
if you did that one. <laughs> uh, let me think. Affection. Physical contact. Yes. Oops, I didn't mean to get into that. <laughs> no. I, I wasn't even thinking what it was. So, um, but yeah, physical contact. If you come in and you give a hug, you know, or, you know, whatever, you know, a pad or, or whatever, you know, you're doing your physical contact. So, you mm. you know, and that's the way to do it for a guy. Might as well just do all of them. I mean, so if you don't know what it is, just do all of them and you're going to be great. <laughs> right. And with so, your child as well, you know, uh, uh, and the physical uh, uh, connection there is definitely high. That's one of my top two there. How do you know that you're doing enough? You know, let's say gifts. You know, that was a that was a rare example of somebody giving a gift every day, just, you know, in a fun kind of mm -hmm. way. It's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but right. how do you know it's enough? Well, you know, that's a good question. A lot of times, like when couples come in the next week after we've worked on it and they've kind of got their homework and they realize, oh, no, acts of service does nothing. But she likes gifts, you know, and has got to up that that week. Uh, well, I'll ask them, you know, how is it going? And, you know, how do you feel? Do you feel you've been doing it? You're on your honor to do that for the other person. And then how do the person receive it? Does the person feel that it is coming their way? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I just feel like from what I've seen that people um, kind of can tell. Well, no, I mean, it's not something that you, you know, if you know that your partner <clears throat> likes physical contact and you didn't do anything but tap their face on their cheek that week you know you didn't do enough right i mean you got to know that's not what it what would be <laughs> sufficient um is it so, also i guess this comes under the category of when many guys will say uh you know i i I, I want to be more intimate, but she doesn't. And, you know, then they define, you know, it should be at least once a week and, you know, all of that, that would come under that category too, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously sexual contact involves physical contact. So certainly sure. uh, that becomes a problem sometimes when people uh, get older and the woman's libido sometimes will go down or they'll have some kind of pain or they'll have issues they have to work through and they don't want to have sex as much. And they are, you know, then they and all of a sudden they had a good relationship before because they were having sex regularly and they needed their top priority was that physical contact. And now all of a sudden that's just cut out because, you know, pain or, or an issue or whatever it is. And then the, and at the same time. Uh, the woman doesn't necessarily want to always be going over and hugging on her man because she doesn't she want to invite him to be having sex. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So even with doesn't have a habit of wanting the physical contact to begin with, but, you know, enjoyed the sex and um, now doesn't really want to do that. And then wants to avoid the physical contact too to avoid the oh, oh i didn't mean that kind of right, thing. right i just i just wanted a hug and now <laughs> i you just know. wanted a hug and i'm not feeling up to that well but. you know what i i feel we're just we're out of time i feel <laughs> let's press the pause button on just what we're talking about here because intimacy is so important in a relationship uh especially <laughs> in marriage uh yeah maybe we'll mm -hmm. circle back to that and uh dig a little bit deeper Sounds like a plan. In the future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. how do we how do we find you? If somebody, you know, wants to dig deeper into the the love languages, or maybe they're having some challenges in their relationship with one of them, maybe needs not getting met. How do they uh how do they meet you? Yes. Um, the, well, uh, my website, I have a couple of them, but the main one is um psychologistinvirginia.com. And that would have me on it. Uh my email, Dr. Creekmore at um, hotmail.com and it has my um, phone numbers, everything. So people can probably reach me easily some uh, somewhere on there. <laughs> and awesome. my books and um, my hypnosis MP3s and so on are on there as well. Yeah. And the books are fantastic in they so in depth, but easy for the rest of us to, to understand. Uh, Thank and you. Always a pleasure having you on and uh, looking forward next time we talk. Me too, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.